You look back on the season, what what do you see? What did you like? What was encouraging? What needs to be improved? Yeah, well, I think the thing is, and I'm sure it was echoed by uh, by Doc and the, and the guys you spoke to yesterday, is even though we didn't get to where we wanted to go, when you look at everything in its entirety, what the group had to deal with, injuries, major trade, trade speculation, guys having to embrace different roles, really playing six rookies, right, at different times, it's pretty incredible that game 80 legitimately meant something. Um, so look, we know why we're here. I mean, it's we're, we're trying to build a championship contending organization. We weren't going to do it this year. We were transparent about it. But we talked about, even after we made the trade for Tobias and Avery and Boban, is we were going to still be competitive, and yet we wanted to increase our window going forward. And the credit to our players, to Doc, who did a tremendous job. I mean, I don't, you, unless you've sat in that seat, you don't realize how hard it is to deal with all these different changing factors and to keep the group together and keep believing. But I think the, the thing that probably hasn't been talked about enough is the chemistry of the group. And that's huge, is that, look, every team has talent, some more than others, but the difference makers usually are commitment, attitude, and team chemistry. And from what we saw with this group, we really, really like just the makeup, the character, competitive, hardworking, tough, high basketball IQ, team first guys. And we're, we've laid the foundation and, and we're moving in the right direction and the credit goes to, to the players and the staff and, and, and to Doc specifically of, of doing a tremendous job. You talked about key, team chemistry. How confident are you that you guys will resign? Do you all allow, have DJ come back next season? Well, as you know, it's DJ. DJ is a player option. So right now, you know, we'll continue to have dialogue with DJ and his agent, but it's essentially it's, it's DJ's option. He's there is a, a, a contract for him next year if he wants to be here. And so we'll, we'll continue to have conversations. And I think, you know, uh, DJ, you know, again, is, is one of the elite, you know, rim protectors, rebounders, and, uh, and has been here his entire career. So we'll, we'll deal with that as, as we progress through the offseason. You have a lot of things to deal with. I mean, you got the Wait, what do you got on that list? Right, right. About 20, though. Oh, man. Right. But, but the idea that you and your staff now have to get together, you've been getting together all season long, trying to figure out going forward. What's the first thing you guys look forward to doing or have to do to get this back to at least to the playoff level, having a team? Like yeah, and again, our, our North Star is we want to build something sustainable that can be, we want to be really good for a really long time. So in terms of the action steps, and like I said, you're, you're dealing with this every day. We have eight players under contract. We have four players with player options, and we have three free agents. Okay, so the, you know what you want to do is try to get ahead of that. Now, free agency technically doesn't start till July one. Since they're our own players, we can talk to our own players. We can talk to their agents. Just get uh, a feel for what's going on. The draft now takes huge focus. We, you know, there's a really good odds that we have two lottery picks. You know, barring barring Detroit getting the number one pick or top three pick. Uh, and so we've spent a great deal of time in town evaluation and intel gathering to make sure that, again, the guys we draft fit with what we're talking about. And I always say you could have all the nice words on the wall, but if the guys are on that floor aren't who that, those words are, tough, competitive, hardworking, team first guys, then you're not going to be that. We want to be a hard playing, tough team. And we're going to, you know, we're going to add players to the draft. Then you pivot through free agency. You look at first your own, then you look at externally how can we get better. And it all has to fit within what our plan is. And within our plan, there's multiple different pathways because at times you got to expect the unexpected, but you try to plan for it. Um, I think you know we've spent a great deal of time on what it's going to take to be a championship contending team, the types of players you need on those teams, and we spend a, an enormous amount of time on how we're going to acquire them. But I think. The improvement first starts with the guys you have under your own roof. And I think a great example is a lot of times when people talk about player development improvement, you think about young guys. Well, think about our most improved player was in his 13th year, okay, Lou Williams. So, and that's, that's pretty significant. And I think that's the challenge. I think that's why you have to have a great player development staff and as an organization invest in your players. So we have a lot of things on our plate, um, but it's exciting. Lawrence, speaking of the things that are hard to plan for, plan for the unexpected, if you will. The team was destroyed by injuries throughout the season. And so 
going into the offseason, what injuries are you concerned about? Which ones are you not concerned about? And how do you build a roster that can account for the potential of guys missing time better? Yeah, you know, I did as soon as the season ended last night, we just burned some incense around this building and brought some witch doctors from around the world. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so hopefully the injuries are out of the way. I mean, I think Pat's making great progress. You know, Gallo will continue. He's going to continue to see, you know, with his hand and hopefully that continues to make progress. Milos, it's just, you know, we have a, a terrific training staff that commits a great deal of time. And what they do is just like on the court, there's an off the court developmental plan. There's a medical and performance training plan. And now it's about not only rehab, but preventative care as well. Um, kind of next with Jawan, I think he'll be able to go towards the beginning of June, get him ready for summer league. So the training staff and the performance staff does a great job of just tailoring a plan for each player's specific needs. And, and hopefully we, we can get a little bit better luck next year. But I think, you know, one of the lessons learned is that's why you have to have depth. Right. That look, injuries are going to happen. We we don't didn't plan on as many injuries as uh, as did. They're a little bit, you know, some are outliers. But you know, you got to be prepared for it. So there's a lot of lessons learned with that as well. So you would say that there's no real long-term concerns with any player who couldn't finish the season. No, I mean, there's nothing medically that would say. I mean, basically, you expect 100% recovery. You know, it'd right. be one thing. Like I I've learned in in this position over the last couple of years, something called the kinetic chain. Right, which trust me, in school in New Jersey, they never taught us anything about kinetics. They did teach us about chains. Uh, yeah, maybe Connecticut, but there's nothing there in the sense like it's not like oh, this guy got this injury, it's going to lead to the next. No, these are kind of isolated injuries that have been dealt with, whether it's through surgery or non-surgical needs, and we feel very, very comfortable. Everyone should should get back to 100% health. Do you have any thoughts about uh, getting with Doc and? agreeing to an extension on his contract He's well the I don't that's not my you know doc and I are partners right uh, doc and I speak every single day I love doc I think it's I mean there's no doubt that doc's done one of the finest coaching jobs this year and I think where I beg to differ people you know I, I read all your fine material and you say this was doc's finest year and I'd say well wait a minute look at his record it doc's had a lot of fine years you know uh, he's a terrific coach terrific leader uh, so I'm sure he'll have those conversations you know, if those conversations are, are what's on the plate for him and Steve. But that's that's not really my business other than Doc and I are partners and I love him and uh, he continues to do, he, he does a great job. What about your future as far as having an extension as well? Because I mean, you're here, you're part of this as well. So you know, would you, that be something that you sit down with Steve as well? I don't, you know, you know it's kind of like when you ask me about player negotiations, I'm not going to talk about any negotiation other than I'm, um, I'm standing here today and love where I'm at. And, uh, and, and in all seriousness, we have, we have a great owner. I mean, Steve is, Steve's off the charts because it's, he's invested and yet he empowers everyone to do their job. He holds us accountable to do our job. And it's what do we need to do better to serve our players? And it, that's all encompassing. So he's been great. Um, and, you know, all those other things just kind of get taken care of. So how do you describe this? A reboot? I've read that word a couple of times in the last few days uh, that other writers have used. Don't look at the other writer's well, stuff. You got, you got good BTs, stuff. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But how, how do you describe <laughs> like, like I'm a fan. I, you know what I Say do? Say I'm a fan. What do, you, what do you tell me? You know, you're getting gas like in an hour or so, and the guy goes, uh, Lawrence, what the hell, man? How can we make the playoffs? What do you tell the guy? Reshape. Because the thing is, we're still competitive. You know, like... You know, the reboot is basically starting over. It's like pressing a button saying, er, you know, this is reshaped because, again, once we traded for Tobias, you know, Avery and Boban with the picks, we said, look, we're not waving the flag. We're, we're not going into the tank game. We're staying competitive. Like, we got really good players, plus we have an, un, you know, great flexibility moving forward, and we have good players. So I'd say it's just reshaping the roster. Uh, in order to, we, we wanted to, we had to be honest with each other. We didn't think down the road we'd be able to add enough to the group to compete for championships. So let's go with reshape. Reshape. Yeah. During Why does everything got to start with the R? <laughs> During the, uh, when, when Tobias was traded here, um, how much of, I mean, the chemistry that he had with, with Boban was, was a factor in bringing Boban along as well? Well, no, look, well, I, I, you don't really do. I mean, you know, it's not like you bring friends of friends to right, come. Right, right. Boban, first of all, can play. You know, like he's quickly become the fan favorite um, and he's like glue in the sense that our players, they like flock to Boban. He has unbelievable spirit. 
Uh, like you talk about culture drivers, Boban's a culture driver. He, he never has a bad moment. You know, people talk about, eh, guy never has a bad day. I've never seen a guy have a bad moment. Just, and even when you see a guy come out of a game, maybe a little bit pissed off, who's the first guy there? Yeah, it's Boban to put his arm around him and just like, and then the guy gets out of it. So one is he can play, he's a great teammate. Um, he's, he's better than we expected, not from a playing standpoint, but the whole pitcher. Uh, and then, you know, Tobias, we got a player in his, really, he's just, he's not even in his prime yet, uh, who just continues to like that, uh, like check every box from a Clipper DNA standpoint. So we feel really lucky. And then Avery, we get him healthy. He's a free agent. Hopefully we can bring him back. So we, we feel really good about all three of those guys. If you had a backcourt of, a, a backcourt group of Avery, Pat, Milos, Austin, and Lou. Lou. How exciting is that going forward? Yeah, I think potentially it's very, very exciting. You know, and some of that is, you know, players have choices. I think that's the, that's the thing about it. You, you, it's a two-way street. Just like teams have the opportunity to trade, players have the opportunity to be free agents. So hopefully we can put that together, and we'll see. A lot of things will play out between now and then. But, no, I think that was one of the things that was very, very exciting about it. So hopefully that can come together. And what about Milos? Um, he has uh, an option for next season, I believe. Um, what, what did you think? Mean, did you see enough of him to, to think that there's better days ahead? Yeah, I think with Milos, it just comes down to just, again, it's kind of like what we talked about earlier, just health. I mean, he's, uh, his passing vision delivery is, is off the charts. His, you saw how his shooting, as he got his legs underneath him, just kept on getting better. Um, I think his passing has a direct effect on the team's kind of passing, uh, you know, just a little bit contagious. Um, it just, you know, with it is, is staying healthy and being there. And he's, he's a terrific guy. Guys love him. He's really, really terrific guy. In fact, I have a European trip in Belgrade. He's my first, first visit there. So we'll see if he knows a good restaurant or not. Can you speak to the improvement of Austin? I mean, he wasn't expected to be a starter, but he was thrust into that role and, and really became a candidate for most improved until the depot sort of ran away with it. Can you speak to Austin's improvement this year? Yeah, I think, you know, Austin had a career year. And you're right, you just look at not just the points, but the fact that, you know, he's consistently now shot the ball well. I mean, he came in, you think about when he came into the league, people really, you know, gave him a big cushion. And now he's north of 38% two years in a row. Puts a great deal of time into his craft. Uh, so I think he's, he's had a terrific year, and he's very driven. Austin's very, very competitive. He's hungry. Uh, he wants to continue to improve. And again, another, he's 25, so he's not even in his prime. With the amount of inconsistencies that you guys have had with the roster this year as far as injuries are concerned, one of the most consistent people has been DJ. You know, can you talk a little bit about how he's kind of helped glue everything together when everything's been kind of all over the place? Yeah, DJ, you're right. Uh, I mean, it's like... You, and we don't take it for granted, but you look at what he's done. I think he's fourth in the entire league over his tenure, uh, fewest games missed. And some of those games, you know, over the last couple of years were more like either we had to miss the game or he had, you know, flu for a day. But yeah, DJ is a rock. And you don't, especially, I think you make a very good point with all the games that everyone else missed to be able to just, it's not even pencil, it's pen, that you have a guy that's going to play, you know, 80 games is, is really significant.